G'day, I'm Blake Williams. Welcome to the scene. A very different looking episode today, as you would see. Uh, of course, last week, Perth went into a snap three-day lockdown, which means that we couldn't film our brand new episode featuring Aussie Legends 1927. So instead, today, we're going to be checking out some of our favourite moments over the past season with our lockdown best bits. And of course, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Just click that subscribe button and you'll get a notification every time there's a brand new episode. Kicking this episode off with uh, one of my favourite moments so far, which features Perth legends Eskimo Joe and we go all the way back. Was there a plan? Did you have a plan or was it very organic moving to the next step? There's like a lot of bands at that stage go well how do we go to the next level like what do we need to do to get to the next level? There wasn't, you... a, there wasn't a lot of strategy like, yeah. astro <laughs> like I've, the last six years I've been in management and developing strategic plans I understand how it all works if I had to develop a strategic plan for Eskimo Joe at that stage, it would just be one page that said world domination. Yeah, right. That's it. There was yeah. no actual strategy. It was just, like, just like, yeah, we're just going to fucking We're going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, but we were really cheeky. Like, we, we got uh, some money from our record label to do our first record, and we went uh, and recorded with this uh, amazing English chap called Ed Buller, and he taught us a lot about songwriting. He taught us all about, you know, how choruses are meant to come in, and, and we, we listened, we studied and did the whole he thing. He taught us about boredom. He taught about boredom, basically. Well, what his, do you mean? Well, his technique with was... With pop music, you know, yeah. you've got to keep them entertained. He, if yeah, you get yeah. bored, you're gone. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so here's the, literally the way he would do it. Is we'd, play, we'd play a song, and then he would, uh, he, we'd get to a point, and we're, and like, we're feeling it, we're, we're right in the moment. He's like, bored, I'm bored. Oh, wow. And we're just like, but this, this part means a lot to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Did it change the songwriting for the better? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we thought it was horrible at the time, but like yeah. any, you know, growth, it's like quite painful to go through. You just do but a pop also, song. you take those things on um, and you adopt them, and then a bit down the track, you realize maybe that's not all for me, but I'll take these little bits. You mm. know, mm. it's kind of like you have to go the full way to come back to halfway. Kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Learn it, then cherry pick the bits that you yeah. really want to keep. But when I said we were cheeky, I, I guess what I mean is that like Ed had this idea of what we were going to do, and he was like, he wanted to make like a Nevermind where every track sounds exactly the same, and we were we had no plans of doing that whatsoever. We wanted to make like we wanted to make pet sounds by the Beach Boys basically, <laughs> um, and Ambitious. so so he was like, we got to the end of our time where we'd been in this really expensive studio, and he'd be like, cool, that's the record, and we're like, cool, see you, Ed, and he went back to England, we were like, see you, Ed, and then we like took all the tapes and we went back. To to this little studio in Fremantle um, with uh, called Couch, uh, with uh, an amazing chap who's not around anymore called Sean O'Callaghan, and he was a guy who we did some of the demos with. But we basically convinced the record company to give us a tiny bit more money, and then we ended up mixing the whole record ourselves with wow. him, and just did all totally the totally changed all it. Of the yeah, right. well, the songwriting was still there, but all of the things that Ed said we weren't allowed to do, and we were like, <laughs> yeah, and we just like, we're like let's do we it now. We have the tapes yeah. now, and so and that led on to us doing a Songs of the City and. Black fingernails that we ended up winning arias for, yeah. you know, for producing ourselves. Well, black fingernails. Eleven, was, I noticed, eleven apparently. It's a eleven. lot more than I have on my shelf. I've only got That's three. How many have you got on your shelf? <laughs> the missing oh, arias. Hey, <laughs> why do I only have three? <laughs> do you only get one? No, you get one each. I do think you it's really? Just moved too many times. Yeah, yeah, right. I might have given them to people. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I mean, they get lost around <laughs> yeah. the house. When you've got yeah. so many, what are you going to do with them? In hindsight, Holding I wish I'd have kept them, but you know. <laughs> Stu and Cav from Perth legendary band Eskimo Joe on the scene. This is our lockdown best bits episode. We're checking out our favourite moments over the past season because we can't film anything, basically. We're pretty much in lockdown. Uh, we move on to another moment, a highlight of the season so far, featuring the Murphy brothers. Of course, Chris, Courtney and Kieran, they are the Perth Bee Gees. Whether it's the high harmonies, the lush locks, the fact that their beards are reminiscent of a great Barry Gibb, we'll never know. But we go all the way back to the start for them when they were really young. In fact, Terminator 2 Judgment Day was number one at the box office. And we talk about how it all started for them. And of course, Australian Idol as well. This is the Murphy Brothers on the scene. The lockdown best bits. What was that time like for you? We were kids, that's the truth of it. We were little kids even, I think you were... Well, I turned 12 at the end of that year. 12, 12 years old. Yeah. My and kids are older than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I've stopped them from forming a band. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> honestly, like, because people have always said, oh, well, you play drums, you play piano, like, how did that come about? It was, um, it was a happy accident um, that we all started learning piano. Uh, Chris got a guitar from somewhere, found it on the rubbish dump, I don't know. 
Um, and then he was just never apart from that guitar from that moment on. Mm. And then uh, I think Courtney found a drum kit at school. Yeah, um, yeah, right. And uh, I decided, well, I'll have that. Thank you very much. Um, well, we started though with we, we couldn't get a drum kit. We're too, you know, poor for a drum kit. So we started with a vinyl couch and a pair of chopsticks, and you could whack the sidearm here, which yeah. goes nice and hollow, and go boom. And then the ottoman, you'd slap it with the other chopstick, and it made like a snap. Wow. So you could just sort well, of Why'd, why'd you buy a drum kit then? I mean, you had, had it right there. <laughs> Not as sexy looking yeah, in, a, yeah. in a band situation. Hard to lug around yeah, as well. It was, yeah, it was difficult to Way get. Way more comfortable. Yeah. But somewhere to bunk at the end of the night. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, of course, Australian Idol was, was a big part of, of your life. Uh, 15, 16 years ago now, I guess. 17. 17 years ago. I guess the question is, Kieran, what show are you going to be on? This one. <laughs> I've been waiting. Six Saving himself. <laughs> Saving himself. I said, one, one day my, my star will fall. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, that was a weird time to watch the guys. I bet. Um, going through that and going, well, I wonder if they're coming back to the band, you know. Um, but, but people uh, obviously still love talking to you about that time. As even though it was almost two decades ago now, mm. round it up. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> but people, you know, they still have it, a real affinity yeah. to that, that moment. Yeah, the questions change, though. It used How to so? be, Well, it used to be, what's Dicko like? Oh, yeah. These days it's, are you Casey? <laughs> yeah. Well, I get a lot of, uh, you, you're that guy from The Voice. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is the scene. This is the lockdown best bits of the scene of this season so far because, of course, we can't film anything this week. We are back next week. Fingers crossed, though. That was the Murphy Brothers. Now to a live tune. I absolutely love this tune. It's been stuck in my head since we filmed this, which was about five weeks ago. This is the Murphy Brothers and Breakup on the scene. Our lockdown best bits. <laughs>
breakup by the Murphy Brothers right here on the scene. Our lockdown best bits, of course. We can't film a new episode right now, so we're checking out our favourite musical and chat moments over the past season, which brings us to Steve Hensby. Now, Steve Hensby, born in England, studied at Berkeley here, chatting about his new album, which is Modern Music for Modern People. It's a concept album, and even Eskimo Joe's Stu and Cav we're a little intrigued. Let's check it out. Concept album. You don't yeah. get many concept albums. Run us through the idea for I'm it. I'm so intrigued. It is. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite incredible. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a, a, another day in my life, really. Um, Are you albums, a modern person? Uh, not particularly, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more of a bowler hat and cane. So and, it is you know. truly a concept record. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so it's about Mr Twister, who is a hairdresser who is horrible at cutting hair. But people flock to his barber shop in hordes because um, he's got some amazing stories to spin. And then Mr. Twister finds love. He's a part time musician. His band makes it really big. But then fame, stardom, fortunes, the internet take over his world and he, he ravels off into madness. Yeah. And then the the seas rise, the oceans take over the world and the world Whoa. ends. I know, Whoa. it's full on. Gee, that <laughs> that got that got really serious yeah. really quickly. <laughs> There's an intermission on the record, which is one of the most <laughs> <laughs> costume change intermission. It's, it's, John Cage moment. It's, it's like very, like very four silly. Minutes of silence, or? <laughs> yeah, almost. And it, it's one of the my um yeah, my most treasured things I've written, and it's very, very silly. The awesome. intermission. Can you can you tell us about the closing track? Like, if the if this is a like a post apocalyptic moment mm. where the seas were, what is the, what's the closing track called? And like, what what happens? Epilogue. 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 Oh, yeah. of course. And, and, and what happens? So it's Mr. Twister and his partner on a desert island, right? And the seas are, you know, they're the last two people on Earth, and, and they have to repopulate the Earth. Oh, hey. are, they both, are they both men or as a man and woman? I don't know. That's up to the audience. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice, yeah. good. On the drive back to Fremantle, yeah. you can listen yeah. to both sides of the yeah. album. Yeah, yeah. There well, you go. I will. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the next Three record, <laughs> <laughs> the next record that I'm halfway through writing is, um, it's called, it's a dry hate, eh? And <laughs> it's about a post-apocalyptic world. Another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dry yeah. Well, the modern music for modern music is the journey. Okay. Of to the post-apocalyptic world, and now. Can, this be, in the, this, can in this be the children of Mr. Twister? Yeah. And they have populated, <laughs> yeah. but now that all they've got is an island and it's, it's really warm. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of like that. Yeah. It's about Perth and yeah. the, it's yeah. the only place that fosters living life form left on the planet and it's an ecosystem based around partying, dancing and mining. <laughs> so that's the, yeah, new, yeah. that's well, the new record. I love the idea, man. It's, it's out there, and as is your shirt, but we'd love it for it as well. <laughs> yeah, when are cupcakes going to come into yeah. the uh, storyline? Yeah. That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> Give it up for Steve Hensby, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> This is the scene, Lockdown Best Bits. That is Steve Hensby chatting about his brand new album, Modern Music for Modern People. Every album he makes gets bigger and bigger. Let's check out some live music featuring the biggest band we've had on this stage behind us, the Steve Hensby Band. This is Ship In and Ship Out on the scene. Lockdown Best Bits.
the Steve Pensby band, that is Ship In, Ship Out on the scene. Lockdown Best Bits. We can't film a new episode right now, so we're checking out some of our favourite moments so far of this series, which brings us to Helen Shanahan. Known for her beautiful, gentle personality, her humour, her incredible songwriting as well. And in fact, for the filming, Helen brought in her little five-month-old baby Bonnie with a little pink earmuffs and everything. And she goes to lots of gigs with Helen. In fact, even hanging out with celebrities like Tim Minchin, uh, who Helen is working with at the moment. And we asked Helen, what's it like to work with a superstar like Tim Minchin? Let's check it out. The scene, best bits. What was that like? It was incredible yeah. because I was a bit cheeky. I didn't tell him I had a baby at the time. Um, and then uh, it was maybe the week before and I said, um, hi, Tim, yeah, I'm so excited to work with you. Um, I just said, you know, I've got a three-month-old baby. <laughs> Is it OK <laughs> if she kind of comes into some of the rehearsals? And he was so down to earth and he was like, are you kidding? Bring her in all the time. And um, I didn't do that. But when I arrived at the rehearsal, he was like, where's your baby? Where oh, really? She? So <laughs> I, I think he was more, you know, interested in the baby. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you, watching someone side of stage or being on stage with them and yeah. watching the way they work, someone yes. like Tim mentioned, what do you learn from that experience? Take well, away. It actually comforted me a lot because for him, he didn't, he was actually. I hope he doesn't watch it. He was actually a bit nervous and um, because he was doing a lot of material that wasn't necessarily comedic. Yeah. It was stuff that he had written after um, a project had kind of gone bust in the US. So it was very personal for him. So for him to be worried about getting on stage so raw without all the comedic... He was still incredibly funny, um, but that just made me think, well, we're all kind of the same in a way. We're all just trying our best and even though he's such a seasoned performer he still has the nerves mm. and, um, but he was really inspiring I, I really loved his manner and just how he got up there and you would think he's rambling but he always came back to a point and I hope maybe one day I'll get to that point <laughs> <laughs> You know, oh sorry, <laughs> taking the microphone. Oh, sorry. You want to wrap the interview up? Okay, yeah, that's all. I'll take that as a cue. It on the floor. <laughs> The one and only Helen Shanahan right there on the scene. Lockdown best bits as we check out some of our favourite moments of the series so far. We're going to leave you tonight uh, with one of my favourite live performances of the scene. This is Across the Sea from Helen Shanahan and we'll catch you next week with Aussie legends, fingers crossed if we don't go back into lockdown, 1927. See you then. Meantime, Helen Shanahan, this is Across the Sea on the scene.
body to lift me up and part the red sea. Build me a raft, help me afloat so I can get past. That's the scene, Lockdown Best Bits, our favourite moments of the show so far this season. Of course, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel, click that subscribe button and you'll never miss one episode. In fact, you'll get a notification every time there's a new episode, which is 7 o'clock every Sunday night and then on demand whenever you'd like through the week. You can also catch us on Facebook at The Scene Music TV. Catch you next Sunday with 1927. Cheers.